Hi everyone, this is Alex Droz with SparkHound. I am the Alliance Manager at SparkHound, working with our great partners like Storyblock. I'm here with Matt Meyer. Matt, you want to say hey and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Matt Meyer. I am a Director and Technology Evangelist for SparkHound. So this is the third part in our three-part webinar series talking about content management systems and how best to analyze kind of where these are important in this day and age and our evolution in technology and digital transformation. And today, as you can see, we'll be talking about the analytics issue. So let's talk about what that means. Uh, uh, despite working for a technology company, I am a bit of a Luddite and think of things very simply these days in terms of how we track attendees uh, and people to our website. So Matt, talk to me about kind of classic analytics. Like what is, how have we been doing this historically? Yeah. Sure. Um, so in in the past, usually uh, what you're what you're most concerned with in uh, on your website is going to be the number of of visits. Who's who's coming to my site and and what are they doing there? Uh, normally, you'd have a couple of things that you'd be concerned about with with that visit. Uh, you're going to have your your page views, uh, which is the number of time literally a page has been hit. You know, what, who's who's seen it? Who's looked at it? Uh, and then you have unique page views, and this is an aggregate of page views that are normally generated by the same user during a session. Now, sessions we'll talk about here in next. Uh, sessions are a set of interactions in a given time frame. Uh, most of the time, you will have a configured session in your in your website, whether it be um, you know a half hour or something like that. It's normally based upon user inactivity. So you're going to have a user who's active through a period of time, then they'll be inactive for a period of time and their session will then close. So that's that's what a session is. And then you have new visitors. So these are visitors that do not have a, a cookie or a little piece of data that normally is written to uh, your browser when you visit a page. Um, these are new, new people that don't have that particular uh, cookie. You have returning visitors, people with the cookie who are coming back to your website. Uh, and then you have traffic sources. Traffic sources are typically where this person came from. Did they just type in uh, the address in their in their address bar? Did they come from Google? Did they come from Bing? Or was there some other link that they clicked on to uh, to come to the site? Um, and then you have the bounce rate. And this is a fun one because this means uh, how how many how many people are leaving just after looking at one page. So did they see the home page and they're gone. Uh, it it really tells is if my website is is engaging and things like that. Now you can use these things together to kind of determine, you know, if if people are staying on my site for any period of time. So if you take a look at the session time and the bounce rate, it's usually going to tell you how long people are going to stay on on that one page. Are they are they staying for just a couple of seconds or are they staying uh, for a good long time? So what we talk with our customers today about though is how we can do more with our data as you can see here but what what more is there to do what what more can we gather from these stats yeah so nowadays uh you you have things called web analytics and that is the process of analyzing uh the behavior of people on on your website and this goes much deeper than the than the page views uh it allows you to look at your your visitor demographic uh, their location, the computer OS that they're using, the browser, their IP, um, and even even deeper into that, as they interact with your site and as you as you gather data on them, you can you can see what they're what they're looking at, what they're purchasing, uh, ads that they may if your if your site is monetized, what ads they're liking, what ads they're clicking on, and things like that, so that you can better market to the people that are coming to your site and and better market and target your products to them. So Matt, what do you let's kind of dive a little bit deeper on this, right? Like what how can we get a little bit more granular here and understand some more specifics about maybe uh, our, our kind of customer behavior and what they've been doing? Yeah, so that that is a little bit more of an invasive style uh, analytic analytics gathering and and for that, you are going to need to put some things on that person's computer or really track them in a in a in a fashion as they are working on your on your website. Uh, and so with that, you're going to need probably somebody to log in and create an account on your website. And when when they create an account, now I really have something that I can base their visit on. Their visits on what are they doing? Are they are they purchasing something from me? 
um, you know, uh, what are what are the accessories or related items that I can that I can then market to them? So if if I go in and I I buy a uh, I buy a glasses case for for my readers because I'm getting older and I can't read uh, right now. Uh, you know, I forget things, and so a good a good accessory to sell me may be an air tag. Uh, sleeve for that particular glasses case. So, you know, he's old, he's getting readers, he's probably going to forget things. Give him, give, him a, give him a sleeve. So there are other things that you can that you can grab from these analytics and, and know, okay, if I see someone in a certain de certain demographic and uh, they're buying a particular item, what else can, can I market to them? Um, you can also take a look at some of the cookies that they have on their on their computer to say to see you know, what, what articles have they read? You know, what, what kind of pages do they spend their time on? Uh, what, what site cookies uh, are there so that I can target my products directly to that person? So we know about the cheaters and their glasses cases. What are we doing with this information then? Like how are we, yeah. what, what can we do with this? Yeah, so we're, we're finding out what our visitors spend the most time looking at really what, it tells us what content we should be focusing on if you have, uh, if you've got ten articles, and nine of your articles are on, you know, how how to make pie, but you've got one article that's how to grill steak, and grilling steak has ten times more views than than your pie articles. You may want to focus on steak, right? You may want to kind of go away from from pies. You, you may not, you may like pies, but your audience is telling you one thing. It's direct feedback from from your audience. Um, it also tells us uh, where our current market is. So with demographic research and things like that that you can get from uh, from analytics, you see, it are, am, am I getting people who are, you know, 40 to 50, uh, from 20 to 30? Uh, what what is the age range? And so, what are other things that they might be interested in that I can that I can uh, that I can market to them? Um, if I have return visitors, are they are they frequently coming back? Uh, am I getting a lot of return visitors as opposed to new visitors? Uh, so, it, you know, what's my what's my problem? Is my problem, uh, or am I getting a lot of new visitors and not so many not so many return visitors? So, is my problem getting new people, or is it retaining the people that I already have? So, your your analytics really focus uh, and find out where your problems are and what I need to work on with that uh, with my site. Um, also, knowing what my consumers buy when they buy. And it tells me it tells me a good deal about what market I'm in and how to then best market to those people. Let's let's talk now about artificial intelligence yeah. and kind of where does this fit in to what we're talking about? So essentially what you are gathering is metadata. You're gathering your site information. And with all of that information, we then can use modern AI, predictive predictive analysis and other things to determine, you know, what is this person going to buy? If, if I have somebody who stays on my site and looks at an item for you know, 10 milliseconds, how does that relate to if they're going to buy something than someone who stays and looks at something for more than more than a minute? You know, it, it can tell me then if if that person is is predicted to buy or not. And should I market directly to that person? Someone who comes on my site, looks at one thing, buys it and leaves that's probably not gonna be the person I wanna to market to over the person that is going to come to my site, buy one thing and look at a number of other things. So predictive analysis helps you find those those, those users and, and then target your marketing to, to them. Um, modern analysis also can show you trends and match data over your, your site views and overall sales outcomes. And what this helps you is, all right, when do I need to order things? So uh, do I have enough it's it's coming on October and AI is telling me I should probably buy more pumpkin stuff, right? It that is that's really where you want. But if you see that you buy pumpkin stuff all the way to October 31st, but you find out that your pumpkin sales drop off the 15th, I probably don't want to keep buying that. So what modern AI analytics does is it 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 predicts and it will tell you these this is the trend in the historic. This is where we see our page views and everything going. You should probably buy more of of this thing. This thing is going to be in more demand here very very soon. So, as, as developers then, and, and as we have access to this information, like what, how do we get to it? What do we do with it? Right, like yeah. historically, and then let's talk about kind of where we're going. Yeah. So, it all depends on the kind of website that you have. 
for the mm -hmm. most part, your no code websites are locked into a single analytics provider normally provided by the site developer. So you don't have a whole lot of, of flexibility or ways around what I'm gathering or how I'm gathering it. Uh, you most, most of the time you have very little ability to track analytics uh, outside just the classic visitor uh, visitors stuff. Um, sure. it, it's really difficult to get data outside the canned reports inside of these no code websites. It's also difficult to, to create and place custom cookies because you do need to do some code in order to place that on there and be able to put the, put the information that you want. So having a no code website, it really, really, really limits you. It's, 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 of course, you're not paying a whole lot for them. They're very easy to set up. So, and, and as you grow out of your, your no code website, this is one of the things that will push you towards something, uh, something else. And so, Something else is typically a traditional CMS style website where you're building something uh, within the context of, of uh, another style or another program. Um, this is gonna be something like uh, um, WordPress or, or Foursquare or something like that. Um, it gives you a lot more flexibility over the layout and, and how you develop your site, but you are usually going to be very limited on, on how you can uh, what is supported and how you can actually gather that information. So with that, you're always building within their framework in, into a CMS framework. And that's, that's limiting in some aspects. Um, then of course you have the custom code and headless CMS sites like Storyblock um, that any, any tool is, is allowed. It, it, you code it however you want. It's up to, it's up to you. It's very easy to gather and route data because again, that, that's my data. I can put cookies on, I can, uh, I can have a login screen and I can gather demographic information and, and pretty much anything I want. Um, you do have to purchase third-party tools though. This is not something that is, is going to come uh, for free out of these things. If you're custom building or you're, you're using a headless CMS site, it really does depend on, on what you buy. And, and the, the nice thing about it over the uh, traditional CMS site is I can buy pretty much whatever I, I want. It's, it's completely open to me. With the traditional CMS, a lot of times I'm locked into very specific uh, products because those are what is supported by that CMS system. What, what um, so where do we go? Like what, what products do people turn to typically for this? Yeah, the, uh, the big guy on the block, of course, is Google. Uh, Google uh, Analytics, it's a paid service. Uh, that, that really, that's, that's the gold standard. That's what everybody's trying to, uh, to meet up. Uh, next mm -hmm. is another very, very large company is, is Adobe, uh, Adobe Cloud Experience. Now, Adobe really uh, allows you to tie uh, into other, other um, systems inside of the, uh, the Adobe suite, uh, really nice um, reports and things like that uh, inside of there. Uh, they, they are a little expensive, the, the Cloud Experience. Um, and then you get into, uh, you know, the, the, the new guys on the block. So you got Mixpanel uh, and, and Matmo. That really, you know, they're 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 paid services for the most part, but they have some free aspects. Uh, Matmo is more open source, so uh, you can you can get involved in how that is developed and and the direction of of where that goes. Uh, but feature set is going to be lacking a little bit with with these two as opposed to the uh, the big giant uh, companies. Also, support is going to be limited uh, with those two as opposed to Adobe and and Google. Of course, Adobe and Google are very large companies and you may get to run around and, uh, you know, if you engage with support at one of the smaller companies, it's probably going to be a more intimate experience. So let's talk about that support then. If we go one of these options, what, what can I count on? Where do I have to fill in the gaps? Yeah. And what's in between? So yeah, with support and building things, uh, no code system, that's your contact, you're, you're talking to the same people, right? Support is always there for, for, what, you, for what you see. Uh, traditional CMS, uh, you are going to be required to use what they give you. Uh, a lot of times there is a, a module that you need to install or purchase in order to use analytics. Um, and if you wanna use a tool that is not supported, you're not gonna be able to use the full feature set. And sometimes it is difficult to get what you need onto the code of, of the pages. It's just, it's not supported. Um, Headless CMS like Storyblock and uh, custom developed sites, you know, it, it, the world is your oyster. You know, you can, you can put whatever you want on there because again, you are coding it. 
it's up to you. You put it on there, either custom code or or uh, story block. You have the ability to put put the uh, the analytics anywhere you want. You can you can uh, buy the the Matsumo the Matsumo product and and tie it right in. Uh, whereas with the traditional CMS, you may be limited to uh, just Google. You have to be sold, I think, on the story block thing. I keep hearing a lot about. Right. Uh, all right. So let's get started with it. I, I'm interested. How do we start? Where yeah. do we? Where do we? So is setting up is fairly the same for virtually for virtually everything. So with headless and uh, with he with headless CMS like Storyblock and custom code, uh, you're going to create an account. You're going to create a data stream, which just essentially gives you uh, an API key, uh, and you're going to have a tag, some uh, another piece of metadata that you would pass along with your with your information. Uh, for the headless CMS, uh, your your code needs to be added to the header of, of the layout pages or, or the JavaScript that's involved there. It's added to the layout pages and, and you're you're pretty much done. Uh, what's nice about the headless CMS is that the layout pages that I give, now my content editors can go in and create new content. They can create new pages. And just like that, the, that analytics code is added to that page. It's part of that layout. So I can add as many pages as I want on the back end, uh, and it, each one will have the, the analytics uh, software involved in it. Uh, for custom coded sites, it's, it's custom coded. The developer creates the page, creates the content, uh, and then needs to remember to attach the, uh, the code to it. Uh, either the, they'll do that either manually, they'll just put it in the top of their of their page, or um, they'll have some sort of library that they import for each page that will put that code uh, into, into the, the site. The difference mainly here is that with uh, a headless CMS like, like Storyblock, my content creators, I don't need a developer after I'm done. My content creator creates the page, uh, they, they edit their content, they do whatever they need to do. Uh, analytics is just, just goes on with it. Custom coded sites, I need I need a developer. I need somebody who's gonna code each individual page uh, for me. So with traditional CMS, uh, you are required to put a little piece of JavaScript to make uh, to make analytics work. A lot of times, uh, you know, if, if you work with things like um, uh, Wibbly, Shopify, GoDaddy, Squarespace, uh, you're going to get the traditional style of, of analytics. Um, they support, for the most part, they're going to support um, uh, the Google Analytic, but the other ones they they may not uh, put that in, um, and that's what that's what we talk about when the script may or may not be be supported by that particular CMS. If that's the case, then you're typically only going to get your classic, you know, our our page view stuff that we saw in the beginning of uh, of the talk. So. A lot of the uh, traditional CMS system are very specifically configured for one or the other analytics tools. So, like uh, like Google, because it is it is the big one on the block. Um, Wix, WordPress, and Google Sites they only use the, the Google tool. You can you can configure Wix to use something else, but you're not going to get the full feature set uh, of of Google Analytics. Now we were talking a little bit before about. Uh, AI-based advanced analytics, where does that kind of yeah. uh, more advanced uh, uh, function come into play here? So it's called deep analytics. And and uh, normally what you do is with, uh, you, you configure some sort of uh, event-based um, event -based trigger. Uh, and that's when somebody does something and the action is recorded. Uh, so if you're, normally you see this in sites that are that are monetized. So if your site has ads or, or some other type of, of tracking on it, when somebody clicks on that ad, um, it, it records who, when, why, how, uh, that information as it, as it goes out to that next site. Um, and so knowing what ads your users are clicking on really allows you to help uh, market to them better and therefore drive up your, your, your revenue from these various, these various companies. Uh, so uh, I do have an example here of uh, of the enhanced analytic uh, in in Google. Uh, you can see some of the things that they that they record, and really, if you click on this link, uh, we'll have the link in the uh, in the uh, comments. Um, you can you can take a look and see all that that they that they have to offer. Set up who we want to look for, and kind of what we want to capture. Yeah, that's right. Um, so Google and and Adobe and some of these other uh, 
uh, analytic suites, when you, when you buy into them, they allow you interface into their analytic uh, software. So into their, uh, their various things that, uh, their demographic engines. So Google has a good deal of, of demographics that it gathers on the people who have Google, uh, Google email, they have Google, uh, you know, you use Google, you got a Google account, it's gathering that, that information uh, about you, your demographic information. And so you can tap into that to see who those people, who those people are, not them specifically. It's not gonna say Matt Meyer visited your site, it's going to say, you know, a goofball from Alabama who, who you know, is, is in the 40 to 50 range still uh, <laughs> visited your site, right? Um, you can also set up uh, gender and other demographics as your desired audience and then have Google uh, and, and the other analytic softwares kind of tailor your, your reports and other things to that demographic that you have that you have configured. You can also use that then in the way that you write back to Google about who do you want looking at your site? Who, who should mar uh, Google market? So is this like search engine optimization? Is that where this comes in? Like what you've talked this through? Yeah, that's precisely right. So analytics is looking at who's visiting your site. Search engine optimization is about how search engines find your site and then how do people get the information that's on that's on that site so okay. how search search engines work is they're they basically first they crawl your site so they are they're made aware of your site and uh the computer goes and it looks at all the pages following the links uh in your in, in your site uh then it then it kind of uh, renders it so it generates how the page looks through html javascript css all this stuff it pulls the code in and kind of looks at how does this how does this render how does it look finally uh it it indexes the site so it looks at the information that it has that that it gleaned from from your site from the site code uh and then tries to put categories to that and usually it's categories that it already knows it isn't normally going to create new categories for something so it's looking at other things about your site that is gonna make it so it's easier to search. How am I gonna to get to this? Uh, finally, then as, as someone is using uh, the search engine, uh, a complex algorithm is going to be run against everything on that database uh, to, to determine ranking and how relevant is your site to what is being asked in the, in the query. Okay, and where do we, how can we make a dent in this, right? Like what, what's going to kind of give us the bump? Yeah. So uh, search engine optimization is, is the key part of website development. Uh, no code systems typically do some light search engine optimization for you, uh, but don't allow you to do too much without paying extra. Uh, traditional CMS, custom code, headless CMS, uh, these are all basically open. Uh, you know, for you for you to use because you're gonna you're gonna do the coding for the most part on those. So you'll code specifically towards search engine optimization. <laughs> so I've been sticking with yeah. you for a while, but let's step it back a second. Yeah, I blah blah blah. What does that mean? Right. Uh, yeah. So basically, your search your your site needs to be crawled. You have to be made. It, the the search engine has to be made aware of your site, and then what it does is it looks at the links. So your site linking has to be set up such that the taxonomy of it, it's easy for the computer to flow through it. So, and then it's indexed. So the, the site metadata, the text on there, um, the, the headings, things like that are looked at and then categorized and put into these index, index headings so that it can be responded. Um, ranking then is done by if it gathered the right information. If you get crawled, but nothing that you have is in the index, you're not going to get ranked. Things aren't going to show up, right? You must be indexed before you before it can be ranked and before it's going to return data to you. What point does this get to the marketing side of it, like search yeah. engine marketing? So with with marketing to it, so um, you're going to take a look at how what do I what do I need to do just just in general code? Uh, that's that's search engine optimization now. If, if I'm going to pay, and, and you can pay uh, the search engines to give, you, to give you preferential treatment, now we're talking search engine marketing, which is going to put you at the top of the list. Now, something that's really important is you have to do engine optimization before you can do 
uh, the pain because if, if Google isn't aware of you or if you don't show up anywhere in their searches, if you have no index, you, you, can, you can throw a lot of money away in marketing that just isn't going to go anywhere because you're not going to get that hit. All right. Uh, for the most part, search engine optimization drives roughly 53% of all website traffic. You mentioned one has to come before the other. How do we how do we start? How, how should we get this set up? Yeah. So you need to take a look at your architecture. What does my site look like? Can I do my links make sense and do they loop back on on one another? So if if I am if and, and just using your site, if I've got links and I've got navigation that I go through and I I lose my place and I don't know how to get back and I don't know how to go to another page. That's a good indication that the search engine doesn't know either. So you're not going to get a crawl experience that, that, that you want, or you're going to get a partial crawl and some of your pages aren't going to get, aren't going to get picked up. Um, your URL structure is going to be really important, uh, as well as your internal linking. Make sure your internal linking links back and forth to that particular, to, to your site. Um, page headers and titles are part of the code that is really, really, really important. And it doesn't make any difference how, how you code this in. A lot of times uh, your, your no-code systems are going to, going to do this for you. Um, if you are building your own custom-coded site or using Storyblock or some other headless CMS, uh, you, do need, you do need to make sure that the titles of the sites are written back into uh, title headers. Um, and then content optimization. So uh, the ones that, that's really for the people who are viewing your site. But also, search engines are going to be looking at the headers that you've got and, and the, the subheadings that you've got within your, your content. If I don't have any paragraphs, if I, if I have no headings or subheadings or anything like that, not only is it going to be hard for people to read, but it's also going to be hard for my search engine to, to index. Sure. What are your suggestions then? How do we make this yeah. a little bit? Um, yeah, for, for people, for the most part, uh, make sure you got relevant topics. <laughs> make make yeah. your site, you know, something that people want to look at. Um, you, you're going to have keywords. Keywords uh, are going to be really important, and you and you you put those in in your pages. Um, the your sites need to be original. They need to be well written, and they have to be accurate. Um, yeah. You want to include multimedia. With including multimedia, you want to make sure you fill in the the alt tags and other things. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but you know, again, readable paragraphs. Headings, subheadings. Make sure that make sure that people can easily read it, and then that goes along the same mind with uh, what what do I need to do with uh, with with code? Uh, as long as people can read it and people can follow it, typically your your search engine is going to be able to follow it too. But you're going to have to think about some of the things in the code, such as title tags, metadata uh, meta descriptions, uh, header tags, uh, alt images and text. These are these are. The, the really kind of boring things that, that a lot of people like to skip over, uh, but you really, you really have to have them uh, on your site in order to, to make sure it gets crawled and indexed properly. Uh, again, the, uh, the computer doesn't know that you've got a piece of, of image on there. It, it does, it knows you've got an image, but it doesn't know what that image is unless you put an alt tag in there. All this sounds great. Where, what do we do now? Like I'm, I'm in, I'm excited. How do we get started? Yeah. So uh, my recommendations for the most part is that uh, the most flexible and easiest way to do analytics and to do CEO, uh, uh, SEO is, is to use a CMS, a headless CMS product like Storybook. Um, it gives you all of the flexibility of custom code from your website with all of the, all of the uh, nice content things that you get from a traditional CMS. It allows you to do your, your analytics all in, in one area it also allows you to, you know, create and, and develop your site just as you would with, with good content uh, for, for your users. Um, proper, proper training of your content creators does allow, your, it does allow them to, to create things properly and things that are, are going to be optimized in, in our search. Cool. Thanks so much, Matt. This is fantastic. If this is at all interesting to you and you'd like to learn more, please give us a call at SparkHound. We uh, are thrilled to be partnering with Storyblock on all of their initiatives around CMS systems and analytics, and we're happy to help you get started today. Uh, give us a shout. We appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Adam.